This video will give you a brief overview on how to use the Eclipse Explorer from the University of Nebraska Lincoln Astronomy Department. To find the simulator, you can search for UNL Astronomy and click the department's website. Under the top menus, go to HTML5, select Smartphone Sims, and right at the top, is the description of this explorer. This explorer has multiple interactive diagrams you can use that you can choose from the menu in the top left corner. The first one, labeled shadow diagram, will give you two options. The cross section will put your, your point of view on this sphere looking outward towards a test screen. We have a light source on the left and the shadow cast by the sphere in the center is represented in these shadowed regions. In the umbra region, all of the light source is blocked out, while in the penumbral region, only part of the light is blocked out. As we move the screen closer to the point of view, we'll see how the cast shadow appears on it. Notice that when the screen is sufficiently close to the sphere, parts of it enter the umbra region, which are completely shadowed by the sphere from the light source. So this first mode the cross-section mode is more appropriate when exploring what we can see from the Earth of a lunar eclipse. The second mode of the figure switches the roles. This time, the sphere is going to represent the moon instead, so we can explore solar eclipses. Your point of view from the Earth is what can be moved around. In the lower left-hand corner, you can explore what you would see at that position about the light source being blocked by the moon. In the penumbral regions, you would see the 
light source being partially blocked. In the umbral regions, the light source is completely blocked. And in the antumbra, you would see the light source in an annular eclipse. Let's explore the second figure. In the second figure, we have a representation of a light source as well as two bodies of different sizes casting their shadows. You're able to move each of these two bodies. You can simulate the orbit of the moon around the Earth by grabbing the smaller of the two bodies and circling the larger sphere representing the Earth. This way, you can see the geometry about the alignment of the Sun, Earth, and Moon at the point of the orbit where the Moon may enter Earth's shadow, causing a lunar eclipse, or where the Earth enters the Moon's shadow, causing a solar eclipse. The settings that you can change are mostly just uh, for clarity purposes, as you will see in a later uh, figure, where you will see the actual proper distance and sizes of the Earth and Moon. The third interactive figure is known as the top-down view. Top-down in this context means we are looking down from above the poles of the Earth and Moon, looking at their correct scale of distance and size and initially set up for solar eclipse. Unlike more simplified representations of the lunar orbit, the real orbit of the moon is not perfectly circular. It is an ellipse. This means that sometimes the moon is closer to the Earth than at others. As you can see, in the representation of the view from Earth, this results in solar eclipses that sometimes are annular because the umbral regions don't touch the surface of the Earth, and sometimes they are full with the full disk of the Sun being blocked out. 
at a point on the surface of the Earth. Switching things around, let's orbit the moon to the other side of the Earth by selecting the lunar eclipse mode. Notice that the Earth, being a lot bigger, casts a lot wider shadow. So regardless of the moon being close, in its orbit to us, or far away, a full lunar eclipse is possible. For those people who need a clearer visual about the Earth-Moon system, you can simplify the diagram by switching to exaggerated mode, where the orbital distance and the sizes are simplified, but not proportional to reality. Let's switch to the fourth interactive figure, side view. Now we are looking at the Earth-Moon system from the point of view of the Sun. The green line represents the ecliptic plane, which is the orbit of the Earth. The gray line represents the orbit of the Moon. Notice that in this view, the orbit of the Moon is slightly tilted. The reason this becomes important is because it explains why throughout the year we don't get eclipses every month. Rather, we only get eclipses during the times of the year where the orbit of the moon intercepts the Earth as viewed from the Sun. These are known as eclipse seasons. Again, for more clarity, you can use some additional graphics options. The final interactive figure is an eclipse table. It is a chart displaying the years and their months. Each of the gray spheres during those years represents a lunar eclipse. Each of the yellow spheres represents a solar eclipse. Notice as I click on each of these eclipses, the information of viewing it is displayed at the bottom.
you can click on it for a larger picture. This concludes this introduction to the Eclipse Explorer. Please use these visuals in conjunction with your assigned reading and review of your class notes.